What's going on everybody? Jason here back in Okinawa, Japan and today we're doing another video of JDM cars for sale in Japan. I have two stops in mind for today's trip. One is going to be Dream Run. They had an Evo out there which I definitely want to check out and the other spot is going to be Johnny's, his second location and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of cool JDM legends out there that we'll check out. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button and stay tuned and let's go see what's on the lots. Alright, so we're here at our first stop which is Project Dream Run. This is right off 58, right off the main road, really close to the Air Force Base where I work at. And here is the Evo I was talking about in a beautiful silver and black two-tone color. This is an Evo 6 and they are asking 1,250,000 yen. Comes out to a little over 10,000. Let's see if we can get any more specs on it. Obviously it is a 5-speed with the 2-liter 4G63. I can't read kanji, I don't know what all this other stuff is saying, but we'll go ahead and check out the car. Starting with the interior, very clean, it's got the Sparco seat for the driver's seat, it looks like the factory Recaro for the passenger. It does have a rally art shift knob which is pretty cool, aftermarket Momo steering wheel. It's got the red and black checkered floor mats, I actually thinking about putting those in my Evo. This is how the sunroof. I'm a sucker when it comes to sunroofs. Really clean car. The paint on this is really nice. Has a really good shine to it. The only thing I noticed right off the bat is the wheel gap. That can easily be fixed with some uh, some spacers or wider wheels. But it is sitting pretty low. And it's got some aftermarket tail lights and it looks like an aftermarket bumper. Aftermarket exhaust. Super clean car. And I know back in the States we can't get our hands on uh, on Evo Evo 6s. Actually Evo 1 through 7. I think the Evo 8 was the first one to come to the States in 2003. So these are always a treat to see. And they have the drip pan removed so we can actually get a little peek in here. And you can see the, uh, the big old turbo manifold aftermarket. It's got a hard pipe for the intake. The turbo looks stock. Overall, very clean car. Let me know what you guys think about the Evo in the comments below. I'll definitely give it a thumbs up. All right, let's see what else they have out here on the lot. So here's a Legacy B4. This looks like an 03, 04 model. It does have some aftermarket wheels. They're asking 590,000 yen, which comes out to about 5,000 US dollars. Here's a uh, Suzuki Jimny. I'm actually a fan of these. They are turbocharged, a little four by, uh, four by four cars. I think they're pretty cool. I'll go ahead and give this one a little bit of love. You guys can hear the fighter jets off in the distance taking off. Check out the sticker. I don't know about that Suzuki. I don't know if that's fake news. Nothing really interesting over here. Go see what they have over on the front of the lot. Here's their little office. Check this out. Little engine for a centerpiece. All right, here's a BMW 320D. They're asking 2,190,000 yen. It's just under 20,000 US dollars. It is diesel. It does have M badging on it. Always been a fan of BMWs, even though they're a headache when they break down, when they work, they're, they're nice. There's a Honda Accord. Or is this a Honda Accord? It is a six speed. Show a little Honda love out there. It does have her car seats. It's actually pretty cool. Mercedes 
S series S550. We have a Porsche boxer over here in the back. This is a hardtop in white. It's got a little bit of a uh, aero kit on it. Actually, a really clean looking uh, looking Porsche. You don't see a whole lot of Porsches on uh, on island here in Japan. For this one, they're asking one million eight hundred ninety thousand yen. It's about seventeen thousand U.S. dollars. It does have the six-speed interior, super clean. Very nice car. All right, over here we've got a. Eclipse Spider, 680,000 yen, it's about $6,000. You don't see a whole lot of these on island. Nothing really too special about it. Soft top's pretty clean. And I know I pointed out Delicas in almost all my, uh, my cars for sale videos. Here's the newest model of the Delica. I think these are awesome. I know I say it every video. So I've shown you guys the early 90s model, the late 90s, early 2000, and this is the newest one. You see four-wheel drive. They're asking 1,190,000 yen. Comes out to just under 10,000 US dollars. <laughs> and over here, there's a uh, H3 Hummer. Check out these wheels, what size are these? Some 24s, so Hummer on 24 Giovanni rims. Not my style, but I'm sure there's folks out there that would definitely drive this. And you would definitely be like one of the few Hummer owners here in uh, Okinawa. And for this, they're asking 1,980,000 yen. Comes out to about 17.5, maybe 18,000 US dollars. And then you don't see a lot of these here in Japan. To give you an idea of what a Ford Explorer Sport Track in Japan costs, 1,890,000 yen comes out to about $17,000. And this looks like it is a 2007. Oh. It's a clean car, it's got some, uh, some mud terrain tires on it. Paint looks in pretty good shape. So there's not a lot of trucks here in Japan. There's a lot of uh, banjo trucks small little yellow plate trucks so for somebody that's got to have a truck it's a pretty good option for you but I think that's gonna do it for dream run they don't have a very big lot but they do have a few cars that catch your eye when you drive by and I wanted to come check them out we'll check out one more car here is a infinity g37 but in Japan this is a Nissan uh, Skyline 3.7 Pretty clean car. It's got some nice wheels on it. They are rays. The body looks really straight. Check out the interior on it. And here in Japan, you can have a 2007 Nissan Skyline 3.7 for 790,000 yen, or actually just under $7,000, which I think is a great price for a car like this. It has tons of power. I know the G37s are super popular in the States. I know it's a luxury brand in Nissan, but I'm sure this car has pretty much everything. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for Dream Run. Now we're gonna head to Johnny's. Uh, Johnny's actually is geared more towards Americans. Their prices are in US dollars, and they tend to have, uh, we call them Oki cars. They're cheap Japanese cars that probably would have been sent to the junkyard, but they clean them up and throw a cheap price on it. And us Americans, we drive cars for two, three years here, and then we either sell them for thousand bucks or junk them because you actually probably get about the same of what you'd pay for one of these cars so there's no need to you know put any money and fix it up and whatnot so we're gonna go check that out but he always does have some JDM legends out there for those Americans that are looking to get a sports car and possibly ship it back so we'll pick back up once we get to Johnny's all right everybody we're here at Johnny's right now they actually have some workers here so I'm not trying to make too much of a big scene but uh, we'll, we'll see if we can check out some of their cars 
we'll start off with this 2002 Mazda RX-8. And they're asking 8,500 US dollars. Now, I will say that uh, car, uh, car dealerships like Johnny's, they're geared towards Americans, like I said, and their prices actually include a two-year warranty and the JCI, which is that two-year inspection. And sometimes that could cost, uh, you know, upwards of $1,000 or more, depending on what's needed for the inspection. That's a biannual. So, for instance, this 94 Toyota Aristo, $6,200. It's on sale right now for $4,900. And it's got the 2JZ Twin Turbo. And that comes with a two-year JCI. So it's not a bad deal. Like I said, you know, it's a convenience factor for the Americans. So that's what the, uh, the cars here are geared towards. Compared to a place like Dream Run that, uh, that are, you know, all kanji plates and maybe geared more towards the locals. So, you know, I, I don't know if they come with a JCI and, uh, and all that. And, and the prices here, I don't think they're non-negotiable. So I will say that. Not a bad price on this uh, on this 94 Aristo. The paint does have uh, a little bit of wear and tear. And over here we've got a newer um, Toyota Aristo. And this is the Vertex Edition. And I believe this one has a 2JZ as well and they're asking $5,900 for this and it's a 99. Oh, and check this out. Old Mr. Two. Actually, uh, I owned an MR2 Spider back in the day, back when I was in college. Huge fan of the midship runabout. So this is a 1986. This is a supercharged model for $6,900 with the two-year JCI. It's got the T-tops. An overall super, super clean car. The interior on this is actually really, really nice. The paint's in really good shape. And it's got the Tommy Kyer badging on it. I don't know if that's a specific model or if it just has uh, some aftermarket stickers on it. Maybe somebody can chime in. But look how cool this car is. Obviously, it's got the engine in the rear. It is midship, um, mid-engine, excuse me, rear-wheel drive with a supercharger. Awesome car. And it is eligible for importation under the 25 year law for Americans. So this is actually a great car to, to consider shipping back if anybody's watching this here on Okinawa. All right, over here we have a 2002 Toyota Verosa. This has the 1JZ GTE, the 2.5 liter. And they're asking $5,600. Clean car as well. It is automatic, however it's a four door, so you got a spouse that doesn't want you to get a stick and you maybe you have a kid or two and you want a four door sedan but you also want to get that JDM power and the 1JZ under the hood, it's probably a good option for you. This and the Aristo. All right, then we got a Subaru WRX over here, you get some Subi love. It's got some aftermarket wheels on it. Five speed interior is pretty clean. And it is a 2001, and they're asking $7,200. I think it's a little much for a Subaru. I mean, these cars are super common out here. But if you're looking to get yourself a Bug Eye WRX, right hand drive here in Japan, $7,200 will get you the keys. All right, moving on. There's a Honda Integra DC5. It is automatic. It's got leather with the uh, suede. Well, this is the premium edition in 2002 for $4,200. However, if I was considering a DC5, it'd definitely have to be a Type R. I did own an Acura RSX Type S back in the day, and that K20 engine is awesome. Not too sure about all the uh, 
the other engines. I think they're 1.6 liters, or maybe maybe it's a two liter, but it's just uh, doesn't have the the VTEC. All right, here's a uh, old Mazda RX-7. It looks like it just got here. Might get prepped and put on the lot here soon. Looks like it's got the auction report. And it got a three. And over here we have a Nissan Skyline R32. It's a GTST. It's got carbon fiber hood. Interior is looking a little, a little dated. And then over here is a nice FD RX7. However, there's a new lucky owner here in Okinawa. It's a clean car though. I like seeing these in. Uh, almost stock form, the stock bumper. I mean, I'm a fan of the, the body kits, but sometimes it's nice to see a, a stock body on these. Check out this Mazda. So I know Spencer, your car bro, he had a, uh, a video not too long ago here at the same location, and he kind of featured this vehicle. And it looks like they did clean it up. So I know it had a lot of dust on it. However, a beautiful car. And I, uh, I did ask somebody that worked here about it. It is not for sale. It's actually the owner of the car dealership. It's his car. So I guess he puts a plate on it and takes it out every now and then. So to kind of clear that air, for anybody who did see Spencer's video and was curious about it, yeah, it's definitely not for sale. Here we have a Nissan Bluebird Triple S. This one's for sale for 17,500 is a 1974. It's a really clean car. If you guys are wondering what all that noise is in the background, there's a uh, there's a school across the street. Sounds like they have band class going on right now. Here's a really nice Subaru wagon, WRX. It's not for sale. It's actually outside over here the lot. Looks like a car maybe they had for sale once upon a time. But very clean. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any JDM content. And throw me a like, share, and comment below. And let me know what your favorite car of the day was. For me, I would take the MR2 from a previous MR2 owner. I've always been a fan of them. Uh, Mid-engine car, rear-wheel drive. Definitely, definitely awesome. Uh, but, yeah, stay tuned, and we'll catch you on the next video.